Hey everybody, welcome to this week's edition of A Double Feature where we are looking at the 1960s version of Ocean's Eleven and the 2001 version of Ocean's Eleven. We're going to sit down to talk about which one we liked better, why contemplate the universe and life and everything, and on that note, Thane, it's time to have a heart-to-heart. Damn, let's do it. Okay, here it is. What is your obsession with the closed-off ending? <laughs> Why do you have to have this closed off? I don't know, because it's happiness all wrapped up in a ball of cheese and crackers. <laughs> it's in I just... Is what it is. I know. It's unrealistic, and it's not at all remotely how real life is. So maybe that's why I like it so much, because it makes me feel like there's a glimmer of of hope at the end of the tunnel, you know? You hate life. I just like to have resolution. Resolution. I don't mind if it asks me questions in the end. So, for example... Uh, movies like movies like The Dark Knight. That's a great example because that movie has a very depressing ending. <laughs> very depressing. And the ending doesn't bother me. It doesn't bother me at all because they resolved the issue, you know? So the whole time, Batman's trying to stop Joker. Joker comes and says... Aha, you thought it was going to be you and me? No, no, it's going to be you and Dent. And you're like, what? And then, but it's okay, because then he sacrifices all to save the world, or save Gotham, and it's happy. Well, it's it's really depressing, but (laughs) at least it's resolved. Okay. So, uh, looking at 2001 version, uh, you said in your review, you know, plan A fails, that's when they go to plan B, plan B has problems, that's when they go to plan C, uh, right. and I, we could probably even argue that there's some hiccups with plan C, but don't worry, they have plan D that they've been right. keeping off in the wings and they just sort of introduce it last minute. Right. Um... That, for me, screams fantasy. We have now left... We have left the realm of realism and what could honestly happen in real life. This is my biggest gripe with um, Skyfall, because the amount of planning that Silva had to do, we've now entered fantasy. It's impossible right. what he could do in real life. What Danny Ocean and all of them could do with seeing every single possible twist and turn and having a contingency plan for everything, it's not possible. And that's what I liked about the 1960 version, because they recognize this stuff's going to come up. There's no possible way for you to plan this type of thing, and you just now have to improvise off of the seat of your pants. And I like that. Even if the plan doesn't work... It's true to form. Right. Now, okay, you're right. I, I will agree to that, and I will admit that there are a few moments in the 9th or 2001 Ocean's Eleven that bother me, like the moment when Matt Damon's walking towards the elevator and the security guard goes, hey, wait, who, who's that guy? But then, uh, what's his face? Saul, Saul Bloom collapses, so they call a doctor, and then it's never brought back up. But I'm sure that footage is all recorded. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, it was recorded of him going to the elevator and getting in the elevator, and then they did the, okay, we're going to switch the cameras now. So then they probably lost recording, but up till that point, it would have been very simple for Andy Garcia to be like, let's watch the old footage, and it'd be like, okay, Matt Damon's out of place. Who does he, who does he work with? X, Y, Z, he figures out it's Ocean's team. So that bothered me because their whole point was to walk away with clean hands. But there are a few moments where it's like, like, okay, 
it would be easy for someone to figure that out, you know? Or like the scene where it's like, oh, you forgot your card? Well, oh, this, this goes to Mr. Benedict's safe. And it's like, hey, well, A, I've never seen you two guys before, and B, you don't have your card. If this is going in Mr. Benedict's, like, safe, 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 then you better believe you better have your card, because there's no way it's going to go past the door. Yeah. So, anyway, there were there were those few moments where I was like, oh, okay, I guess I'll believe that, but it wasn't a perfect film. Yeah. But it's a fantasy. But so it's Ocean's forgive. 12. I mean, that's... Yeah, we'll, we'll forgive them. Not for Ocean's 12, but we'll forgive them. All right, I just want you to say you hate reality and prefer fantasy worlds. <laughs> the old okay, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> okay, I don't hate reality. I just feel like it could be better. <laughs> well, no, I just feel like. The whole purpose, the whole reason why I love movies so much, and I love a good story, and I love a good comic book or a good graphic novel, the whole reason why I love those types of stories is because (laughs) the end is meant to give us hope, right? It's supposed to give us hope. And so what a movie is supposed to teach us about the human condition. Okay, fine. (laughs) Maybe that's why I like these superhero movies so much. I just like it when we have movies that teach people that life is not as bad as it seems. That's what I like. Or maybe we need more movies that teach people life is exactly as bad as it seems. <laughs> Move on. That's true. I, I will admit, I guess the one thing that I did really like was um, in the original when uh, Ocean's wife comes to him and says, you know, one of these days your luck's going to run out. And I, and I kind of liked that they played off that kind of throughout the rest of the movie that, you know, his luck was just kind of running out and running out and running out. And then to the very end, it completely ran out and he's walking on the street singing songs. <laughs> well, Sammy Davis is singing songs. Ocean is moping. <laughs> well, I think that's uh, perfect thing to be focusing on is luck because we're in Vegas and right. um, it's a gamble in the original one. It's an absolute gamble. They know it's a gamble and they just happen not to win it. Uh, in the 2001, there's no gamble here. Uh, it's yeah. they're, they're trying to explain that the entire deck is rigged in their favor. Um, yeah. And I guess it's fun to watch somebody cheat and swindle the system, especially when it's Andy Garcia that you're swindling. Hey, this is just kind of random, but uh, did you, in either of the two movies, was there a, a, a particular con that you thought was pretty clever, and you're like, okay, that was awesome? I don't know if it's a con. What I think I got um, the most chuckles out of is when... Um, they they were in 1960s. They were trying to uh, get into the casino uh, dirt on New Year's Eve to rob it. But there's a drunk lady walking by. It's Liza Minnelli, oh, yeah. <laughs> and Dean Martin has to run interference, and he just gets her. And then the banter back and forth as he's like leading her on, and then she's like <laughs> wanting to go but not wanting to go, and wanting to go, and then finally just sort of drops her and walks away. Yeah, I laughed so hard. Uh, that's probably horrible of me, but I laughed really hard on that. Um, yeah, yeah, no, that was that was a good one. That was a good one. I think I had two that I really, really liked. Um, one of them was the uh, the balloon scene from uh, Ocean's oh, 2001? Uh, the, the, yeah, 2001, where the balloons go up so that you can go. I thought that was that was pretty fun. That, that gave me a couple a good laugh. And then actually, I don't know why I laughed. Maybe this is a bad, but I laughed so hard when Brad Pitt is giving mouth to mouth resuscitation. <laughs> To Saul Bloom, and he's like, "You've lost him." <laughs> I thought that was a great con. I just loved it. And then a few minutes later, he's on the phone with um, uh, Andy Garcia, and just like the man who's robbing you. I don't know. I just very, very fun. Some fun moments in that movie. I really liked the humor in the in the 2001 version. 
But it is, it's fun to, I, I, I will admit though, the fun thing about the old one was that you had all these, you know, like, uh, you know, like Dean Martin and Samuel Davis Jr. and um, who else? What, Frank what? Sinatra, Red Skeleton, yeah, Frank, Frank Sinatra, 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 Sinatra. yeah, just these big, big people who not only were actors but were musicians, you know, and just that was kind of fun to. I don't know to see him show off. Yeah, to see him kind of show off during the ice, you know, I thought that was kind of fun. So they were both good movies, but I, I, I agree. I think, yeah, the 2001 is the clear winner in my mind. Just, I just thought they had better chemistry within the cast. And, um, yeah, just a better plan, just a better heist in general, better motives, more solidity in the resolution. That's why we started with our heart to heart. Jeez, I just don't know why directors can't do that for me all the time. <laughs> oh, and I like oh, I agree. Two thousand one is the better movie. It's the it's the better viewing experience. Um, I mean, it's funnier. But I mean, I might disagree with you. I I prefer the motive of uh, 1960 over 2001. I mean, I like I, I honestly like that. Um, Walking they, down the street singing. They, yeah, that they didn't get yeah. the the money, and yet they still go on. Yeah, no, I I I agree. I mean, that was very clever. It was very clever, and I didn't see it coming. You know, I I thought the big twist was going to be, oh, their friend died, they're going to use that to their advantage and get the money out. Okay, that's well, clever, died. that's clever. But <laughs> Yeah, and so I thought, oh, this is the ending. And then when it was like, let's cremate him, I was like, wait, what? <laughs> like, really, it really surprised me. I was like, oh, wow, I did not see that coming at all. So very, very clever, but I don't know. It's just not a heist movie to me. I feel like a heist, like I said, a heist movie, they... You know they're going to get it. The whole point is to trick the audience into, into so the audience thinks they know how they're going to get it, but then, surprise, this is how they actually got it. All right, everybody, that does it for this week's conversation about Ocean's Eleven. And Ocean's Eleven, we'd love to hear what you have to say in the comments. What do you prefer? Do you prefer the brutal honesty of 1960s Ocean's Eleven <laughs> Or do you like the upbeat fantasy of 2001 Ocean's Eleven? Uh, let us know in the comments. Um, which movie did you think was funnier? Did you like the chemistry? Anything that you want to say? We'd love to hear what you have to say. Uh, as always, like this video, subscribe to our channel, uh, and then come back in a little bit to see what we have going for next week, and you get to figure out what movie won our voting. So... Lots to look forward to. We have some fun stuff going on. Uh, see you next time, and as always, watch great movies. See ya.